Hey everyone, welcome to another English grammar lesson. Today we're going to be covering the abbreviation ETC or etc. So again, ETC or etc is a Latin expression meaning and other things or and so forth. Basically that the list goes on. Etc. is used to show that a list continues, that there's more to it than the stuff you've written into the sentence. So, let's take a look. I play many sports. Basketball, baseball, football, etc. Okay, so again, etc. means that the list goes on, that it continues, that there's more to it that we're leaving out. So yes, I play basketball. Yes, I play baseball. And yes, I play football. But I also play other sports more than just the ones that are listed. And this is how we use etc. Pretty simple, right? Or how about this? This semester we'll be studying commas, semicolons, colons, etc. So once again, we have a list, and the use of etc. shows that the list goes on. Yes, we're going to be studying commas and semicolons and colons, but there are more, more topics, more concepts that we're going to be covering this semester. So again, this is how we use etc. to show that a list goes on. Okay, so now that we have a pretty basic understanding, let's talk about some things that we don't want to do with etc. And the first of those things is that we don't want to use the word and with etc. like this. I like apples, oranges, bananas, and etc. So this would be wrong because etc. already has the word and built into its definition. Etc. means and so on, and so forth. So by actually writing the word and into our sentence, we'd technically be saying and and so on, and and so forth, which, as you can see, would be wrong. Okay? So just make sure you're not saying and etc., because the definition of etc. already includes the word and. The second no no, so to speak, is that we don't want to use etc. when we already have a similar expression in the sentence, like such as, or for example, like this. I enjoy many flavors of ice cream, such as vanilla, chocolate, cookie dough, etc. So the reason you wouldn't want to use etc. here is because the phrase such as already shows that we're not including everything. It already shows that we'll be shortening our list and leaving some things out. So to say etc after we've already said such as, would be a bit redundant, a bit repetitive. We would just say, I enjoy many flavors of ice cream, such as vanilla, chocolate, and cookie dough, and leave it at that. The same thing is true here. John plays many instruments. For example, he plays piano, guitar, drums, etc. So again, same problem. When we say, for example, we're already showing that we're not going to be listing everything, right? We're just going to be giving a few examples. We're not going to be naming every single instrument. So, since we have for example in the sentence already, we don't need to be saying etc. We would just say, John plays many instruments. For example, he plays piano, guitar, and drums. No etc. needed. Okay, and the final tip with etc. is that we don't want to use it with a list that isn't actually logical. So what does that mean exactly, a list that isn't logical. Well, when you're listing a bunch of sports you play, or a bunch of fruit you like, or your favorite colors or something, most of the time, with lists like that, it's going to be pretty easy to assume what's coming next, to assume what's being left out of the list. And that's when we can use etc., because we can assume or infer what's coming next. But that's not always the case. Not every list we have is going to be so focused, or linear, or logical. And when we have that problem, when the list isn't quite as predictable, when it might actually be kind of tough to guess what's coming next, we don't want to use etc. Like this. Sarah likes peanut butter, knitting, math class, etc. So like, this is not the best use of etc, right? Because the list is far too broad. We're not talking about something super specific like sports or instruments or colors or food. Yes, we're talking about Sarah's particular interests here, but they're so wide-ranging that it's going to be pretty tough to actually guess what's coming next. So, because of that, using etc. doesn't really work here. Again, when we use etc., 
we use it because it's fairly obvious what's coming next in our list. And here, it's not that obvious, so we wouldn't use etc. Okay, so I know I said that was the last one, but there's actually one more thing, and that is, how do we use punctuation with etc., seeing as how the abbreviation ends with a period? Well, it's pretty simple. Put a period on etc. all the time, and just make sure that you never have two periods in a row. So if etc. ends your sentence, the period on etc. can also be the period of that sentence. Otherwise, you just follow normal punctuation rules. If you need a comma after the period in etc., or you need some quotation marks around it, go right ahead. There's nothing special about it otherwise. Just make sure you don't have a double period situation at the end of your sentence, and you're all good. Cool. Well, whether you came here for a refresher or just now learning this stuff for the first time, I hope this video helped. Be sure to check out the free practice down in the description, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.